So the BMF belt is on the line this oh, yeah. weekend. Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje. You know, we haven't seen Max Holloway at 155 in some years, and it looks to me like he's taken the proper amount of time. You know, the first time he fought Dustin Poirier was just kind of a one-off thing, but he right. was still very much a 145-er. Watching some of his training footage and some of uh, the stuff he's put out on Instagram, he looks like he's taken the proper amount of time and put the dedication in to filling out that 155 frame. Sure. And Max is a little bit older now, so we know as you get older, you don't get skinnier generally. And right. even though Max is a pretty lean guy, he looks like he's thickened out nicely for this fight. I'm really excited about it. I'm really interested to hear your technical breakdown of this because all I've been hearing is that Justin Gaethje has no business being in there with Max Holloway because he's going to knock him out. This is a, a setup. If you're a Max fan, you should hate this fight. And the only thing that I'll say in pushback to that is one of those two guys has been knocked out before. One of those two guys has had their butts out on the canvas before. And that and one of those two guys was not Max Blessed Holloway. Right. So I think this fight is a lot closer than a lot of people are giving Blessed Holloway credit for. How do you see it playing out and what do you think each guy needs to do to win? There's no two better guys to be fighting for the BMF title. And I love that at UFC 300, we're contesting this belt. I think it's a meaningful thing and I'm really excited for Max Holloway to get his shot at the title. And look, Max Holloway is one of those guys that is so damn good everywhere. But one fight or one headline or one week of, uh, of, of just the internet talking can totally change every, everybody's opinion and outlook on Max Holloway. And that's what happened to him. He went out there and put on a boxing clinic in one of his fights. And he's, you know, just moving around and just piecing up Calvin Cater with his hands, yep. right? He's just saying, I'm the best boxer in the UFC. And then people just chalk it up and, and they, they think they're done with their work early when they say Max Holloway is really good at boxing. You have to go back and watch all of Max's fights, even his most recent fights. He is one of the most complete mixed martial artists when it comes to, to striking on the planet. The way he's able to kick, the way he's able to throw elbows, he's one of those guys that can land an up elbow with his back hand all the way from outside and kickboxing range. And that's something you almost never see. So Max Holloway, while he is being painted into this light of uh, a really high level boxer and that's it, is that couldn't be anything further from the truth. Now, when you're dealing with 155 and you're dealing with the very top of it, which is Justin Gaethje, you're dealing with another great boxer, somebody who Trevor Whitman has spent years formulating a game plan for, years you know, critiquing little tiny things and making an absolute monster when it comes to striking in MMA. And look, statistics show Justin Gaethje really doesn't lose unless it's against the absolute best guys in the absolute best division in the UFC. So the X's and O's to this one are very interesting. Obviously, I'm not breaking any news by saying this fight is likely going to go all five rounds, or if it goes all five rounds, we're not going to see very much action on the ground. Neither of these guys are going to shoot for the first takedown, and they're both going to look to stand and, and outbox each other and outstrike each other. And while I do think that Max Holloway is a very complete mixed martial artist, all of the same compliments I just gave him for being able to mix the striking up so well have to be given to Justin Gaethje Absolutely. also. You know, Justin Gaethje has some of the most devastating leg kicks, and he throws them from a very close range. He's able to be inside an essentially phone booth fighting, dirty boxing range, and then he can chop a leg kick down. And that's one of those ones that's very unique. You know it because we've trained it a lot. Krubo Perez teaches it all the time, where you don't chop the leg from a parallel angle and you don't chop up kind of like the Alex Pereira kick you're actually slicing downward yeah. and it's a beautiful kick and it's devastating on the thighs if you can land it Justin Gaethje hits it better than almost anybody in the UFC and Max Holloway's got to watch out for that but remember Justin Gaethje does uh, change levels a good bit when he's striking and he's pretty good at switching stances and temporarily doing uh, uh, orthodox and southpaw exchanges so you kind of get confused as to which direction you need to evade and sometimes you can wind up walking right into his power side, which is not a place you want to be when Justin Gaethje starts throwing those overhands. But the fact that he changes levels so much and he does it really fluidly can make him susceptible to some of those shots that Max Holloway throws up the middle. 
Corey Sanhagen gets all sorts of love for being really creative when, with the timing and the placement of his jump knees. Max Holloway deserves all that same credit. Yes. He's very crafty, and he's really good at sitting straight in the pocket and not just hitting you with a check hook or not just throwing an uppercut, but he can actually get himself off the ground and throw a knee while you're in the phone booth. So this fight to me, I know I said in the last video that Charles Oliver versus Armin Sarukian could potentially get a 50K bonus fight of the night. I'm actually leaning towards the BMF title, living up to our expectations and then some, and probably leaving both guys with 50K extra money. Yeah, well, one thing we know, Justin Gaethje is super hard to finish, and Max Holloway for has sure. never been finished, never even been sat down for that matter. So it's a really compelling matchup, and both of these guys, these guys are going to go to war. We, oh, yeah. we know that. We know what's going to happen here. And the notion that Max Holloway is not going to be able to be durable enough to hang in there with Justin Gaethje, anybody saying that must have not watched Max Holloway fight. Right. Max Holloway is the most durable, the most game guy. And here's the thing. When you talk about potential positives in the column for Max Holloway. Max Holloway is one of the most precise strikers in MMA. Not just with his boxing, but he, I mean, the what he was doing to Calvin Cater, c having a conversation with the analysts while he's backing up and landing shots against the guy who many people thought was one of the best boxers prior to that fight in Calvin Cater. And so I'll add to that point real quick because Max Holloway remembered what his parents taught him, which is nice to make eye contact with the people you're talking to. He wasn't even looking at Calvin Cater. He was looking at the Octagon yes. <laughs> officials and talking to DC when he was talking about that. It's Yeah, it, it, a totally insane. You know, thinking back to that fight, you realize just how skilled he actually is. But right. here's the thing. Justin Gaethje likes to lay it all on the line. Oh, yeah. You know, shout out to Jay Miller in our Discord channel, yeah. friend of ours. He sent a statistic the other day in Discord um, for fight of the night or just for bonuses, right? Mm -hmm. And so it shows statistically this guy's, you know, 30% of his fights, he got a bonus. This guy... 47% of his fights, he got a bonus. And so if you're anything above 20%, that means one out of five times that you step into the cage, you're getting a bonus of right. some kind. Justin Gaethje has had 12 fights in the UFC. Justin Gaethje has had 12 bonuses. And earned he every is one of them. He 100% on the bonuses. So what that tells you is... He lets it all hang out. Yeah. And this is where Max can have his advantage. Max Holloway, when the Korean zombie was, you know, in, in, in having his last fight, and he was like, you know what? I'm a big underdog in this. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to bite down on my mouthpiece, and I'm going to put on a good show for my crowd of people that are here to, right. to chant the zombie song. Such a fun night. And what happened when the Korean zombie decided to get a little frisky and let loose? Max Holloway shut the lights out oh, yeah. with his precision. Don't think he can't do the same thing to Justin Gaethje. That is why my prediction is Max Blessed Holloway wow. is going to win this fight. I'm taking the underdog in this fight. I have tuned out all the noise. I love Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje is a great fighter, but when push comes to shove and you're ready to bite down and throw, there is nobody that I would rather have uh, as my prediction than Max Blessed Holloway. I think that his precision is better than Justin Gaethje's. I think that he's got a better use of range than Justin Gaethje. Even though he's a, a division lighter, he's taller than Justin Gaethje. He's, he's rangy. He switches stances very well. And he is as game as it gets. I like Max Blessed Holloway by technical knockout in this fight. Well, I love the prediction. And look, you're you're shining up Max Holloway for all the right reasons. He's so good everywhere. And if anybody can get the job done and steal the BMF belt from Justin Gaethje, I feel like it is a new and improved, bigger body Max Holloway. But, you know, Justin Gaethje's one of those guys where, you know, he kind of gets painted in a light. So the same way I was talking about Max Holloway earlier, where people think he's just a, a brawler. He just wants to stand in the in the monster M and trade. And that's what Max Holloway likes to do. But I would venture to say Max is, is more skilled than Justin Gaethje at that. When you talk about two guys and Max Holloway has that famous, uh, you know, come to the middle yeah. footage where he's pointing at the and he'll throw with you. But that's all very calculated. Justin Gaethje, to me, while he's great at that sort of stuff as well, he's really, really meticulous and calculated when he's moving around. And the way Trevor Whitman has changed his mindset from being let's uh, the most exciting fighter that the UFC's ever had or the human highlight reel to let's go be the greatest in the world is something that I didn't really expect to see in Justin Gaethje. I thought we were just going to see a guy come over slightly later in his career and be very exciting for us. 
But he kind of turned a new leaf, and he's one of those guys that knows he has the skills. As long as he sticks to the game plan that they've devised and they've come up with, he can get his hand raised against anybody in the world. And so Justin Gaethje, in my opinion, needs to control where this fight takes place. He's really good at moving laterally. He's able to use every inch of the octagon. He doesn't have to worry about takedowns. So I think if it's really wise for Justin Gaethje not to get caught in a firefight with Max Holloway because I think Max shines very bright in those types of situations. And while Justin's very good at it as well, he's really good at keeping his chin tucked and throwing in a boxing exchange. He doesn't need to do that. I think he needs to stay on the outside. He needs to try to beat up Max's legs, slow the pressure, slow the pace down off of Max Holloway, and make Max a, a slightly less dynamic striker as the fight goes on. If you can eliminate some of the tools from a guy like Max Holloway, you can certainly greater your chances of getting your hand raised against him. And in my opinion, Justin Gaethje is one of the most durable fighters at 155, and that's why it's so important for him to take those those tools he has. He's got a lot of tools in his arsenal, but when it comes time to fight, he throws the fundamentals, the meat and potatoes, and the stuff that works the most. And it's really hard for people, even though they know what's coming, for them to stop it or get out of the way of it uh, or, or be, uh, avoid it at any cost. So Max Holloway's got to be very careful. I do worry a little bit about his chin and, and uh, durability as far as jumping up to 155. Obviously, he's, like you said, never been knocked out, and Justin Gaethje has. But I have a feeling both of these guys are ready to go to war. And if Justin Gaethje can control where this fight takes place, the speed at which this fight takes place, and overall just be the dance leader for the majority of the time, he can get his hand raised. It's insane to think that this fight is likely going to go to decision, but that's what I'm going to go with. I don't think Max can finish Justin because he's so damn durable. And then the exact same thing for Max Holloway. I just don't see Max Holloway getting finished, getting sat down. I think this goes all five rounds and still BMF title holder. Justin Gaethje keeps his belt. Probably a unanimous decision. It's going to be close, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I certainly think Max Holloway is going to win some rounds. Nice call. I cannot wait for this Me one. Me either.